put on this computer. So we're just going to go over Django forms real quick. And I'm just going to create a, a model, for, model form and just like to be able to create um, like groups or something, something like that. So I created this um, Django app called Meetup. And I've got, uh, I'm sorry, a Django project called Meetup and an app just called Groups. I don't know what else to call it. So I haven't really done anything yet in here. Um, so the first thing I need to do is um, register or attach my groups app to my meetup project. And let's go in here. So in my URLs, um, just for all, like I know before we used to do like path um, groups, uh, groups slash and then like include the groups dot urls file uh i could have to include it in here um but for this one i'm just going to not include the groups i just want to go to the slash home page uh and then utilize the home the groups app as my home page so in my groups i need to create the urls dot py file and i'm just getting here just to kind of show you just to get to a starting point to build a form. And then in here, uh, well, let's actually do that. <clears throat> and then I have to, you know, import the views from uh, import views. I haven't created any views yet. And, uh, Let's see what we want to do. Just do like a home page and then go to like a, a new. So I'm going to do views dot like home page. And this is just going to render, render a template. So I can do home page um, name equals uh, home page. And then inside my groups app i need to create a templates create another of the groups and in here i'm just going to create a home.html and i'm also going to create a um like a, a group form so inside of here the group dot the group form.html and in my home i'm just going to do i'm just going to have a, a link to a, a to create a to create a new um a new group i guess html and in, in here i can do an a href equals this is going to be a named route to which i call it new group yeah, I think that's it. And then create a new group. All right, I just want to see. So I've got that. So I need to actually first create a home page. Home page that takes in a request. And this is literally just going to re return render, uh, render the request, and then the group slash home.html. And it's not going to pass anything in. Let's see what we have so far. So I created the home page, created the view for that, and created the template for that. And this literally is just going to be a link to another page to a form to create a new group. With that in my models, I'm going to create a model real quick. Class group that models dot model. And this is just going to have a title models dot char field max length of 200. And let's have a description char field max length. Actually, let's have this a text field. Make it like a thousand. 
Does anybody have any, what questions do you have about the process of what I'm doing? I'm literally just setting up a Django project and an app, and then I'm gonna, gonna create a form. Is max length um, required for text? I don't know off the top of my head if it's required or not. I but we can check text field Django. Text field. So I know text field. Uh, it's not enforced. So I don't think it's required. But I just want to enforce it because, yeah, because it's always good to have some validator in here. We don't need people getting typing happy. So, right, exactly. All right, so clear. So, down here in the terminal, I just got to make migrations uh, Python manage.py make migrations. Uh oh. Let's have CD meetup. Go up here. All right. And now I can just migrate the entire app. Okay. So I'm just going to Python manage.py. I'll run server. Come over here. Do my local host 8000. It says new group not found. It's not a valid view function. Where does it say that? Uh, new group right there. That means I don't have def. Um, so my URLs, it looks like I need to create um, new, new group. And then in here I can do new group, take in a request. And I'm just going to pass it initially. There we go. <clears throat> so when I click create a new group, it's going to go to, um, I don't know, why is it doing that? Let's see, in my home page. Uh, why did it do that? There we go. So, okay, I've got a new group. So now in my group form, I'm going to actually want to create an HTML template. I don't like that. <clears throat> and this is going to just be a form. So we can say like uh, H2 a new group and then this is going to be a form and inside this form I'm going to div create a button create the type equals submit all right and in this form uh, the method since I'm creating something in the database it needs to be a post request because post is you actually create something in, in the database with post and put requests, or I guess post you create stuff, put, put requests, update items. And then I'm gonna need a, my CSRF token. And then I'm gonna just do, cause I'm gonna be passing in a form as P inside my view. So inside my view, oh, where'd it go? <clears throat> I need to create a form um, to validate, to essentially just pass in. Um, so actually, let's just return that form first. Return, render, request, um, groups, slash, group, form.html. And it's gonna pass in some form, but we haven't created that form yet. So this is where we get into 
is this kind of where what questions you had about like creating model forms and classes? Anybody? Yeah, this is where I was kind of lost, but yeah, I, I'm following up with, with you right now. Okay. <clears throat> so what we want to do is create a form that has, uh, where is it? My models that's associated with this group. So I can create a form that will take in a user's input and have them have it be associated with a title and a description of this model. So inside my groups app, I'm going to create another file called forms.py. And this is where I'm going to create my form um, for that's associated with this group model. So inside my here in my forms, I can from Django import forms. And now I also need to from my models import the group model because I'm going to need to reference this in my form. And if we look at model forms <clears throat> in the documentation, you're, I'm importing a model form here. I'm pretty much going to be importing the same thing. And I'm importing my an article model. And then I can create a form class called like group form that inherits from the model form class inside of Django. And in order for, so I'm just gonna copy this down here. So according to this, I need to create a class. So that's similarly named to my model. So I can say class group form and I'm inheriting the forms model form. So I'm inheriting attributes from that. And then just the way the, the forms class works, I need to create a subclass of meta. This is just the way Django likes to do it. And in here, I can pass in attributes such as what model do I want this group form to reference? So I can say the model is the group model, which is right here, which is also where what I'm uh, importing here. And then what fields do I want to include in the model? So if I do fields and the fields that I want to show up in the form, I can look over here. I want the title and the description field. So I can do title and the description. So inside my views now, instead of render, so right now I'm not rendering anything. I'm passing in this dictionary that there isn't any value here. So I can say, hey, the form is the group form that I just created. And so I'm gonna have to import that. So is it from, or from, forms import group form. So I'm in instantiating a new object. Just remember, this is just a, a class that I created. In this form It's literally just a class. And I'm instantiating a new class object. So if I click this print form, and if I refresh that, if I look down here, so I'm printing the form out. This is exactly, it's being printed out as HTML. So it's got a label ID title with a title with a label and it's got an input. The name is title and all this, this title stuff that's being, that's literally the name of my model field. Hey Tom. Yep. How do you get a hold of those um, to give them like, pre-render on the template how do you how do you affect like the label or the uh 
you know, give it a class name, for instance. Do you do that in meta as well? Yeah, there is a way you can edit. I'm not 100% familiar how, how, to, how you do that. But yeah, there is a way to change different attributes about the, about the form. Okay. Like, yeah. <clears throat> so and we also have description. So it's got a text area. The name is description. It's got a max length. So it's already adding these attributes into the form. So if I come back here and I refresh it and you can see the title. And now if I say like, um, first title, this is a description and create, it's not going to do anything because right now my views, I'm just rendering the form. I'm not doing anything after I, um, make a post request. So I can say, Hey, if request dot method equals post do something so I can say print do do something and I can print the request up here just a dot method just to see what it is else So if up here, if I refresh this, it says, uh oh, air there. And I can see the method right here is post. So I'm printing that on line 10. It's being printed right here. And now I'm saying, hey, do something. But right now it's not actually doing anything. So right here, I can create a new form by passing in the post, this entire um, post request into um, this form, this group form. So I can say, and I just want to print something out before I do that. Um, request dot post. I'm going to print the request dot post first. So I'm going to go back, refresh, first title, create. <clears throat> And now you, can, you can't really see it in here, but my post, so this is where I did, got, did the get new. And then I, when I actually posted it, this is what is coming through. It's got the CSRF middle token in the dictionary. So that's in this post, the value is a dictionary. It has a key with the CSR middle, this middleware token. So this makes sure that, hey, this is in fact a valid form coming from my website. And also has that title which what I'm, which is an array of the actual value and a description of what I actually typed in there. So this is what's being passed in to this group form class that I'm creating here. And it kind of already knows how to parse through this data and make sure that the form is valid <clears throat> and it's able to save it. So I can say, hey, if the form dot is valid, so this is a built-in method in Django. So if I typed everything in the form and everything is valid, um, I can, what is it, form.save. So if I refresh that, what happened? Create new group form, first title, first description. Great. What happened? Didn't return HTTP response. That's totally fine. So at the very end, I can kind of return. Um, I guess I could just return render and go back to my home. I guess it's actually. <clears throat> I guess in the home page, it's actually render all the the groups. Uh, models import groups. I could say all groups equals group dot objects dot all, and then data equals 
all groups. And now I can just return instead of this empty. Now in my home, I have to render Uh, for group and all groups. Uh, and for, I just kind of want to show you that in fact that I'm actually creating uh, group dot ID title description. So if I go back to here, why isn't it doing it? Is it saving it? <clears throat> oh no. Groups and all groups. There we go. So it's actually saving stuff when I'm creating a new group. Oh, so it, it looks like it's not being routed back there. Oh. I think I can just redirect. Anyway, <clears throat> it's because I'm not actually passing in anything. So in here, I'd have to, uh, I guess, do the same thing. So that form.save, is that actually saving that information into that SQLite database? Yep. So just like I'd be doing it in the console, doing like dot .save, like if I'm in the, or in the Python shell, if I'm creating things in the terminal and I do dot .save, it'll save everything. So this is a this is a form associated with a model in my database. So it needs to inherit from the model form class, and you literally just have meta a, a subclass called meta, and then just have an attribute with the model equal to the the model name that you want to associate this form with, and then whatever fields you want. So if I got rid of this description field and came up here and say new, it only shows the title. So if I wanted to add additional attributes, like description, it adds the description field. Um, what if you were to add more than, like what if you added a third option, would that throw back an error because there's nowhere <laughs> for it to save that information? Probably, so if I said like time, Oh, I don't know actually what will happen, but let's find out. Yeah, it says from views, import views, field error, unknown fields, time specified for the group model. Okay, thank you. I think that was one of the missing pieces to the puzzle for me, so thanks. What other questions do you have? Is it a pretty similar process to create a form that's not based on a model? Yeah, I'm actually, I don't know if I've ever created a f form that's strictly not associated with a model. I guess like when you're submitting, so you wouldn't create a, a class for that I'm thinking form. About so okay. like, I'm like, thinking like if you wanted to create a search bar, um, that would be a form, right? But you wouldn't want that to be associated with model. You want to, it to like run a function. Right. So I want to see if I have an example. Uh, oh, come on. Where is it? Um, So for example, um, like Ticketmaster, 
don't know if I have it. Input. <clears throat> so for example, here's my, like my ticket master. I have a form with a post and then, so the search form, I guess this is it, a hundred thousand of count. So yeah, this is as a form, but it doesn't have any actual form associated with it. So I just want to see the search form. I just want to make sure the views. So yeah, so in this search form, I make a post request to this concerts list URL. I come over here, I go to concerts list. It goes to forward slash concerts. And then here's this concerts list. And then I extract the artist or whatever I'm, I'm extracting this from the form. So you don't actually have to create a, a class, a form class. So you could make a form that asks for all kinds of information to make them feel all warm and cuddly, but you actually only use part of it. Sure. Like if I want somebody to put in a bunch of stuff and I only extract certain data out of it. Yeah, that might have been a bad way to put it, but it was a serious, <laughs> like, yeah. No, yeah, so exactly. So, for example, this this form, it only takes, it has in one input, and it's got, yeah, and the name is artist. So, when you create your form, you should have a name to it. So, when you add a name to it, you'll add this name to the post um, dictionary. So, when I, in my views, in my post, I have this, keyword of artist and I, it just extracts whatever I put into the, um, in the, in that input field. And this isn't associated with any models or anything. This is, I'm just literally using this to just grab some user input and then I'm going to do something else to it, such as generate the Ticketmaster URL. Was that helpful, um, Geo, for the forms? Yeah, definitely. Now I understand it uh, better. Thank you, Tom. Yep, no problem. Is that, what other questions do you all have? Would you be able to run through that function in the views? This one? For the search bar? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, or for the, the ticket Oh yeah, master. for ticket master, for that so, one. So the search form, so I pass in, I'm, I create like a post request like I normally do. And where I want to route after I make that post request, I go to this concert list named route, which comes over here, looks for concert list, runs this views concert list method. So it comes into here. And so I have access to that post request through the request um, input. So this is where I can extract anything from that, this form, the search form HTML. What does the, um, the req.get news URL do? So this is that request library that kind of showed yesterday. This runs an actual, an a, it goes to an API endpoint. So that's just for the group project that's uh, for you to like read through the documentation and kind of how that works. I kind of, I kind of went through it yesterday showing the, uh, all the articles in the news API. So I'm importing request as request and doing a get request or to this specific URL and it gets a response back. Then I turn that response into JSON, which extracts all the, the news data or the Ticketmaster data. And I'll go over this stuff at before our happy hour. Um, I'll go over a portion of the group project, specifically like the Ticketmaster portion of it before um, happy hour. Did that kind of answer your question, Emma? Yeah, thanks, Tom.
what other questions do you all have? I have one unrelated to this problem, so I'll wait till after the recording.